Now, repairing seams essentially means attempting to make the seam between the two halves of the mold invisible. There are certainly many ways to go about this. I like to start by removing the excess material along the seam, and to do this I'm going to be using a Dremel Rotary tool. We will be removing a lot of material here, and there's ample reason for wanting this to happen fast. You can hand sand and use chisels to get the same result, but it's obviously much slower and much more labor intensive. The Dremel makes this process very fast and kind of easy. I'm attempting to sand off any excess material that leaked out where the seams between the two halves of the mold perhaps didn't perfectly push up against each other. At the end of my Dremel, I have a sanding drum. The reason I prefer a sanding drum over any other bits is that the sanding drum uses a thick piece of sandpaper. The sandpaper has a backing, which is fabric, and this backing has a bit of give to it. Now, this means contouring and avoiding gouging out large flat spots is much easier. The bit itself, not the removable and replaceable sandpaper part, is a rubber-covered metal drum. It being rubber means that it also has a bit of give. This combines to make this bit very forgiving, not removing too much, not removing too little. There are crevices and folds the sanding drum cannot get into. And here I'm going to be using a knife, regular sandpaper or a chisel. Having a selection of chisels in different sizes can actually be really useful for this process. Resin does seem to dull them very fast though, so don't buy the finest chisels in the world made for wood carving to do this job. Buy some cheap ones that you don't have to care too much about in case they get destroyed by using them on the resin. Buy some chisels that you are willing to replace essentially. Stability when working is really important here. Just like when drawing or sculpting, we want to control the pressure we are applying with our tool really carefully. You also want to be precise and only take off what little you need to take off. Taking off more means more work later down the line. You'll constantly see me balancing the tool by using both hands on it. One hand leaning on the sculpture as well. This will help you be precise and able to apply light pressure. Pretty much all the time I'll hold the Dremel in one hand, the other hand touching the tool while at the same time resting on the sculpture. Three points of contact provides ample amounts of control. Safety is of concern when sanding anything really that creates dust. Wear safety glasses to keep your eyes from getting small chips of sharp resin in them. You don't want to wear gloves with rotating tools as they can snag and cause more harm than going without gloves can. Now this little Dremel tool is not really strong enough to cause too much harm if you were to snag a glove especially with only a sanding drum attached to it, which is a soft tool, but I think it's a good habit to get into anyway. A mask to keep the dust out of your respiratory system is also something you should be using. Don't be an idiot like me and wear a surgical mask. Wear a proper dust mask. We have many types of seams and you will see them all here on my cast pretty much. We have traditional flashing, which is a seam that has excess material on the outside of the cast. These kinds of seams are caused by material leaking out where the two halves of our mold meet. These are simple, positive shapes, sometimes so thin that you can crack them off with your fingers. They sand off really easily and require very minimal retouching. These are easy to handle, essentially. We have open seams, which is where material didn't make it to the seam between the two halves of our mold. They are open holes in your piece. Obviously sanding is not going to do anything for us here, except make the hole bigger, which we don't want. Now if I can reach the place where the open seam is from the inside of my casting, I will cover the opening with fiberglass from the inside and then re-sculpt the surface from the outside of the sculpture with resin. If I can't reach it from the inside, I will simply have to attempt to re-sculpt it from the outside. Which can be very tricky since the material wants to fall into the open hole, of course. Now filling these little by little with thick resin, unless the opening is really wide, 
tends to work just fine, though it is a bit of a finicky operation. Offset scenes are what I would describe as the worst. They are essentially places where the two halves of your mold didn't line up perfectly for whatever reason, creating a seam where the edge of the front half is of a different height than the back half. You can see one of these kinds of seams here on the back of the arm. Now these are really tricky as they require a lot of re-sculpting. You want to even them out just a touch with the Dremel first, but not a lot, as this will begin to create a flat spot on your sculpture. You have to re-sculpt the surface of your piece, beginning with the seam that's higher up and kind of turning the form back down to the lower seam in Hydro Resin. This can be difficult, but with practice entirely manageable. And as you'll see here soon, once we re-sculpt the offset seam on the back of the left arm, it will disappear and you won't be able to see it. The arm is not going to be, well this arm, is not going to be the worst place to get one of these. An area with a lot of detail can be very tricky to re-sculpt, and some areas will be flat out ruined by having an offset seam run through them. You'll notice here on the cast that I have the seams around the ears running behind the ears. I didn't always used to do this until I got an offset seam running directly across the middle of an ear on a cast a few years back. It was virtually impossible to retouch convincingly, and I ended up with a sculpture that had one ear, both being larger and longer, well, wider than the other. By planning where you separate the front and back half of your mold carefully, you can avoid offset seams that end up being detrimental to the success of your piece. Sometimes offset seams happen, but you want to make sure that they happen in an area that you are confident that you can re-sculpt and retouch so that the offset seam becomes invisible. So far we've only done damage to our work, removed the excess material with tools that are, all things considered, very heavy handed. While it is perhaps possible to refashion the surface of your sculpture using a Dremel tool and sandpaper, it is certainly something that I find to be too difficult. So, I tend to grind away just a touch more than what I need, essentially creating like a very shallow depression along where the seam used to be, very shallow, and now I have room to re-sculpt the surface using the same material we cast our sculpture in, which is hydro resin. 